Hello and welcome back dear friends, it's me, Odo, I'm back in my campaign of um, our final Wrath of the Righteous, in between episodes, mm. I went to the toilet and when I came back my cat was in my seat, so now I'm in a non comp seat <laughs> with my cat beside me and I'm probably distracted most of the time. Oh sweet cat. Mm, anyway, um, our crusader army has now my my general has now 19 mana so we don't get all of the um magic back in between after sleeping mm -hmm. and we can get some new troops let's do this Hmm, we could also get some clerics. Hmm. They are not troops that will fit in our... I mean, but they could... If we take these, these cost a hundred per person or hundred ten. Hmm. We can use this one. Let's see. Hmm. More or less the same. Hmm. I'm not sure if we should do this. This is really expensive. How many money do we get per round? Army up north. Like here. Let's travel this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if we take this army and move it like here. No. Uh, Okay. Ha. Together. Together we are strong. Yeah. We'll have to stand. So it doesn't take the um, movement points of the army that is. Mm. 
the one that gets groups. I mean, that's okay. It would be unrealistic if we could go from here. But that's okay. I want to wait for this to regain some strength anyway. Mm. And let's just move with our troops. We wanted to go to the Nameless Ruins because of Nenyo. Okay. Random encounter. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, my sweet cat. My sweet cat. You are so <coughs> oh, oh, she's making Kura Kura like a dog. Okay. Commander, we caught a suspicious lad on the road. He says he's an ally. And he's desperate to talk to you. Who knows who he really is? Okay. The young man is trembling. The young man before you is trembling from his wounds and exhaustion. His boots are in tatters, and if he had any weapons or armor, he shed them along the way. His clothes are torn, and his hair is wet, like he recently swam across a river. Blood oozes from the wounds on his chest and shoulders, and his skin is cracked and inflamed from the acrid water of the world wound. Okay. Seems a nice guy. Jaeger. Commander. The man breaths heavily, and the words emerge as a whisper from his dry throat. My squad. Ambushed. Beyond the river. Help. Okay, we can do a good thing, give our guests some water and something for his wounds, a lawful thing. What is this? Report pop properly at once. <laughs> or an evil thing. Who is this clown? <laughs> Throw him out. <laughs> or let's just wait until he's finished. <laughs> Barely catching his breath, he begins again. Yaka and Kel, Hell Knight of the Order of the God Lord, under the command of Paralictor Ragil Deren. Our squad is under attack by demons, far surpassing our number. Without your assistance, we are lost. Okay. Hell Knights, they've supported the Crusaders more than once in our battle against the demons, despite their nerveth cringes questionable reputation we cannot abandon our allies in trouble okay if they really are our allies then of course it's just Amelia looks Yaka over closely from head to toe I kind of think this isn't a knight at all a real hell knight would be skinned alive for losing his infamous black armor what we see here is a stranger without rank or insignia who wants us to march to God nowhere. Kinda smells like a trap to me. Uh, okay. Yaka, who is attacking you and why can't you handle them on your own? Where is your squad now? Why we should help you? What do my companions think? Ah, oh, I could ask my companions about that. I've been contemplating the possibility of joining the Hell Knights myself. We'll take the risk and try to help them. Why can't we go into the detail of Anivia? Well, okay, let's ask this first. Large creatures that attack from the air. Some are fighters, others are, at a guess, Clerics with dangerous divine magic. They looked like stone come from come to life. So gargoyles. I'm almost certain they are gargoyles. Oh, 
<laughs> they fell upon us from the sky while we were setting up camp and that are most vulnerable. Hey, what are you doing, cat? Okay. I don't I don't cradle you again. Uh. And they caught our forces at partial strength. The Paralictor had dispatched some of our troops as scouting teams. The flying beasts didn't fight us. They just fell on us from the sky, grabbed our fighters and either took them somewhere or threw them to their death. We are unprepared for that. Where's your squad now? Not far from here, beyond the river. Hmm, it's not far for a single fighter who abandoned his armor and weapons, but we can't get across the river so easily. We'll have to take a detour. Even if we can save anyone, it will seriously delay our offensive on Dresden and will give the enemy a chance to prepare. Hmm. The Hell Knights are the formal allies of the Crusaders. I cannot make promises on behalf of my command, but under the circumstances, you must be able to convince our Paralictor to join your army. Hmm, some Hell Knights. Hell Knights in our army? That's just what we need. Is this cynical or honest? <laughs> what do my companions think? Your companions look at their guests suspiciously. Hell Knights, with allies like them, we've no need for enemies. If it suited them, they'd abandon us to the demons without a second thought. But we're not like them, are we? We have to save them. <laughs> Looks like it, Frank, to me. But even if he is lying, Dresden is our goal. If our offensive is delayed, we won't get another chance to retake the city. Okay. So, still. so all of my uh, companions are here. I didn't take him with me. The Hellnet Knights are heartless executioners. Saving people from the claws of demons is a good cause in itself. But these people are doing everything they can to become just like the devils. Shedin, forgive me, but I fear we should leave the Hell Knights to their fate and continue our offensive on Dresden. Aaron, do you call Prelate Holrun? Well, picture an entire army of soldiers li just like him. Do we need allies like that? If they die, I shan't shed it here. Interesting. Although the Hell Knights are evil like Darren himself, he would leave them to die. We could help them, but only if they join our forces in return, we could use some fresh blood. Hell Knights? <laughs> no, not for all the gold in the world. Don't you know what kind of people they are? One minute you're just going about your business, the next you're locked in the stock. And there's a butch and black armor standing in front of you. I don't know who these knights are. But if there are people suffering out there, then of course we have to help. It's what we came here to do, isn't it? Well, Amber is right. The crown on her shoulder croaks resolutely, supporting her words. Huh? What? Nanyo blinks a few times baffled. This question has no scientific significance. What's interesting is how the water in the river poisoned by the world wound will affect this boy. With your permission, I'd like to examine him or his corpse in a few days' time. <laughs> uh, we'll take the risk and try to help them. Or throw him out. We'll continue the offensive on Dresden. Nah, we'll help them. We're the good guys. Also, we need the Hell Knight. I mean, we we did turn down the Inquisitors, so 
we need some other other brutal forces and troops. The situation is critical. Please send your reinforcements as soon as possible. I will go ahead and meet you there. My reinforcements. Does he mean I should send my... Oh, there is the mysterious elf again. A wounded elf, huh? Well, there were lots of wounded in Canabras who wounded him. In what way? Anivia appears relaxed, even nonchalant, but her eyes gleam attentively. And her hands, as if by coincidence, are resting on her belt next to her weapon. How should I know? It must have been demons. If the wound was serious, I doubt he was fully recovered from it. Maybe if you could point me toward a healer, I could... The woman wrapped in rags all the way up to her eyes turns around at the sound of your footsteps. Damn it. In a lightning fast motion, Anivia knocks something from the woman's hands an amulet that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. It falls to the ground and disappears in a flash of magic. What's the rush, sweetheart? Stay a while, the commander and me. We've got a couple questions for you too. Who is this with you? Looks like a spy to me. Not my first time seeing her in the camp. Just snoops around the skin, the soldiers, this and that. And if you try to tell her, she just starts behind the tent, then she's nowhere to be seen. I've been hanging around here for hours, looking all bored, waiting for her to bite. And she did started asking her questions, and then you came by, right on cue. With an unnerving smile, Anivia stares the woman, stares the woman who maintains her grim silence straight in the eye. All right, we're gonna make you talk now, darling. Who do you work for? What did she want from you? Looking for some elf, tall, not from Mendef, got wounded in Canabras. No idea who it might be. Don't have anyone like that in the ranks. Trust elf, you won't escape this time. Who are you and why are you hiding your face? Fine, you've got me. We'll talk, but not here. Lead me somewhere away from my from prying eyes. She's all yours, Commander. I caught her, I handed her over, and now, as they say, I wash my hands of this whole affair. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In an ex exasperated gesture, she rips the half mask off her face, and you see her black skin and crimson eyes. It's Kalis, Kalesa. The elf you met in Canabras. Hmm. So we talked also um, with the guy that is following her. Um, this was between some episodes. I didn't think it. I now can remember her. Um, it was on the marketplace. She was one of the first encounters we had. I'm not sure. Probably we even found it before we found Ember. Why did you follow my army? You find someone. Kilesa let out the resigned huff. His masters want me dead. Which means I will die sooner or later. After a pause, she narrows her eyes and spits out. But that doesn't mean I lie down and accept my fate. I'm no lamb to the slaughter. 
and I won't be waiting for a kindly executioner to come for me, knife in hand, never again. Are you a spy? Your scarlet eyes flash defiant. And she mutters through her teeth. I'm not going to hide it. I've come here to commit a violent and bloody act. But I do not serve the demons, and I won't do you or your forces any harm. Why? Frowning skeptically. She gives you an appraising look. And what will you do? do with my story. Take it into account and pass your judgment. Tell me if you deem me a reprobate. Help the poor girl if you don't. Well, I haven't asked for help, and your authority to judge me seems rather dubious. She's clearly lying to you, but it doesn't feel like the guile of someone spotting a crime. There is a slight hounded look to her eyes that makes her seem more like prey than hunter. Yeah, well, I'll leave you be. I met other elves who looked like you. They served the demons. Animora's minions. Ah, that's the name we heard from this guy. Words escape her lips before she is able to stop them. Then she looks at you with visible irritation. One of the Skari's servants is a powerful elf by the name of Animora. Those corrupted elves are her lackeys. Don't ask me how I know this or why my appearance is similar to theirs. I'm not your enemy. Are, they, are these guys dark elves? But if you see them, kill them without remorse. I know who you are. You are Kaelessa, a cultist of Tiskari. That's a lie. Her crimson eyes flash, and she, has, she says firmly, I loathe demons, and I'll kill any I come across. Okay, perception check. Succeeded. She's clearly holding something back, but it doesn't appear to be lying either. Whatever it is, she's hiding. Her claim that she hates demons sounds quite convincing. You're not lying, but you're not telling me the whole truth. What was I supposed to pour my heart out? She looks at you defiantly. You have your war, soldier. I have mine. You are fighting chaos and madness, and I, I am fighting lies and hypocrisy. But we are both willing to die for our cause, aren't we? Well, I'm not sure about myself. Why would fawn slander you? Kaylessa's grim expression hardens further, as bleak and unflinching as the words on a to tombstone. You are asking questions that are dangerous in and of themselves. I urge you to stop. The more you know about me, the higher the chance that a traitor's dagger will find its way into your back. Well, should we help her, or should we attack her? I'm not sure. Well, let's help her. With a crooked smirk, Kaylessa says grimly, he's the one who should watch out for me. Okay, interesting. Now she's gone. There's a summon small earth elemental. Interesting. Where are 
for you. Hmm. That's a true sales camp. Let's take these guys. Is the Crusaders camp up north now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, it's up north now. Interesting. So, a reliable redoubt. A military outpost built along the walls of the canyons. Wait, what? The army who erected it clearly believed that the place offered some safety. And how do we get there? Like down there. That's a level four army. The enemy fort blocks the way. Okay. I mean, but we can't can't take this army on. It's a level four army. You've spotted a traveling merchant. Do you wish to meet with them? Hmm. Yeah. Well, why not? The salesman. I can remember him from the Kingmaker series. A skeleton is walking across the waste. He moves with pep in his step, humming a tune. His skull bobs in chorus with the humming, making the coins inside his head ring rhythmically. Next to him, that nightmarish horses of flame and shadow draw a cart loaded with valuable-looking items. Upon seeing you, the skeleton offers a dramatic and hearty wave. Good evening to you here. Or is this what they, uh, or is this what days look like in your world wound? Can't really tell, but no matter. Be it day or night. Skeletal salesman always has the best deals you can find anywhere. He proudly sweeps his bony hand over the goods in his cart. Ha! Here I was planning to attract new customers with the offer of a free potion of Fox's cunning. But I can see you don't need one. Pleased with his joke, the skeleton utters a rasping Cuck, chuckle. <laughs> I could use a free potion. <laughs> what do you sell? Tell me about yourself. I could use a free potion. Why not? Yeah, please take and take it and enjoy. Just don't use it to outfox some poor salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if we ask him to tell us about himself, we learn that he... I'm a simple man. I keep no secrets. You can see right through me, the skeleton laughed. As he knocks on his empty ribcage for emphasis. What would you like to know? Hmm. Um. Listen well. I don't repeat my mistakes, or you won't be able to live with yourself. Get it? All right, move in. Once I was just like you, exploring all sorts of ruins and filled blah, 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 blah. 
He's telling me about the bone dragon. But that didn't save my life. Instead, he just turned... Uh, surely he did. Well, I would sell off all the plates and armor left by previous adventures. Mm -hmm. That was just the beginning of my troubles. For a long time, I wandered the River Kingdom paddling wares until I met one devious scoundrel. At first glance, he looked decent enough, decked out in armor, clearly a paladin. He asked me where my master's lair was. Obviously, he wasn't the first to take an interest, but the Draco Leech was no slouch. He put an enchantment on me so that I couldn't even remember the lair's location. However, the knights turned out to be quite the wizard too. I'm no expert in magic, but basically he offered to perform a ritual that would reveal the location of my master's lair. Then he and his pals would kill the Draculich and give me my freedom, plus half of the horde. Sounds like a sweet deal, huh? So I agreed. Like a fool. He showed me the contract and it seemed all right to me, so I just signed it right then and there. We conducted the ritual and the knight found out where my master was hiding by looking at some astral tracks or whatnot. Long story short, they killed the Draculich. The knights offered me my half of the treasures as promised, and then, as per the term of our contract, he demanded payment for the ritual's components, for my freedom, and then there were taxes, excise, fees and fines. Before I knew it, I had to give him all of my loot and still couldn't even cover my debt. And so he offered me a way to repay it by working as before, for his master this time. Thus, I'm still traveling badly and all that, until I earn every last coin that I owe him. And you know what? To pay off that kind of sum, I'm pretty sure I'll have to keep working for him until Grotus brings the end times. Okay. Now, that's a story, isn't it? Someday, I might even write a tragic play about myself. I'll call it Undeath of a Salesman. <laughs> That's a nice pun. As for the moral, with a professional air, the skeleton holds up one white finger. The moral of my story is this. Watch what you sign. That lesson is free. For the rest of what's in this fine card, you'll have to pay in gold. Okay, who is your new master? Did I tell you the knight looked like a paladin? Well, he wasn't anything of, of the sort. On the contrary, he was a servant of Mammon, the archdevil of Avarice. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. My greedy and corrupt. Mortals. His unholy symbol is an Asur coin with the head of Mammon stamped on it. Yeah, nice gift. That's the one he sold me to. Guts and all. Although by then I had no guts really. Now at least. If somebody asks me where my master's lair is, I can honestly say Erebus, the third layer of hell, palace of the royal treasurer, entrance by appointment only. Hmm. Do you want me to try to free you from this curse? No thanks. The skeleton waves you away with both hands. Been there, done that. Only made things worse. I've had enough help. I'll make do. Do you trade with everyone, crusaders and demon worshippers alike? You bet. What do I care about which side of yours is winning anyway? Both are buying my wares. Business is booming. Everybody needs a weapon and a good set of armor. 
You sell one thing, the next day they bring it back all wrecked and full of holes, looking for a replacement. Sure, this war will probably end one day. Maybe the Crusaders will finally patch up that abyssal hole, or maybe this whole region will fall through it. That's when I'll pack up and go elsewhere. Galarian is a big place. I can always find new customers. Hmm, okay, let's show me your wares. Why not? Uh, we s What's that? Um, crossbow of judgment. A plus crossbow. Hmm, we'll probably keep that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. The stuff. Braces of armor plus four. Interesting. Mm hmm. A Haramaki light armor. Interesting. Whatever Haramaki is, headband of lost in intelligence. Naming light crossbow plus to four to sixteen points of damage instead of three to twelve. Scrolls, lesser bolster, matter magic rod. Hmm. Bolster spell. Spell now deals two more damage per die rolled to all its targets. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, probably not. Mm -hmm. This weapon is it best, better than Finian? Yes, it is. This plus two heavy crossbow has a critical range reduced to twenty. Whenever it threatens a critical hit against an evil or chaotic creature, it is automatically confirmed. Okay. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure if I will have to talk to Finian again. Okay, anyway, this is the time to stop for today. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.